Just I am well. doing that now. Yep. Good deal. Alrighty, so hello again. Um, sorry for those technical snafus, but hopefully the video gave you a little better feel for at least some of the picturesque views of campus. Um, again, my name is Lynn McCarthy. I'm with the admission office at Ripon. I also grew up in Ripon, Wisconsin, so I love my hometown. Um, and I'm a 1983 graduate of Ripon College as well. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Professor Jean Rigdon. Jean will be the, the host of tonight's panel. And Jean wears a number of hats on campus, including professor, mentor, director, and parent. So Jean, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Lynn. Um, as Lynn mentioned, my name is Jean Rigdon, uh, and I do wear lots of hats. I should have brought them all here and had them on. Um, so I am the director of teacher education at Ripon College. So I work with students who want to be teachers someday. Um, I also am uh, one of the mentors at the Franzine Center for Academic Success. So working with our tutors on campus, working with um, students who have academic issues and need extra help. Um, and then one of my proudest things is I am a parent of a Ripon College graduate. Uh, my oldest daughter, Elizabeth, graduated uh, in 2019. Uh, she was a German and history major and communication minor, and um, did have the opportunity to travel to Bonn, Germany for six months and uh, had a semester abroad. Um, she graduated and now is at uh, Marquette University doing graduate studies. I also have a sophomore at Ripon. Um, my daughter, Emily, is an exercise science uh, athletic training um, major and also looking at adding human performance as a second major and has studio art as a minor uh, currently. She also is on the women's soccer team and both my children have worked various jobs on campus. Both of them have worked in admissions. Emily is one of the admissions um, ambassador that does do tours and so some of you maybe have had a virtual tour with her. Um, the final hat that I wear is um, that of um, co-president for the parent network at Ripon College as well. Um, so if you have joined our Facebook page, um, you will sometimes see posts from me um, answering questions and so forth as well. If you haven't joined the parents um, network page, our Facebook page, I'm sure Lynn McCarthy can help you uh, find that out later. So what I'm gonna have the other, other panelists do is introduce themselves right now um, tell us a little bit about their children, and then uh, we'll circle back and start answering some questions. Um, before I do that, I, I did forget. I was supposed to tell a short story. So here's the best that I can at a short story. Um, this sweatshirt that I'm wearing right now says Ripon College. And um, last October, I went to Chicago with my youngest daughter, Emily, and we went to the women's national soccer team had um, their victory tour. And so we were at Soldier Stadium walking around enjoying the event and someone came up to me and said, Ripon College? And I said, yeah, you know, I mean, and it's not very big. I mean, it's kind of a small little thing here. And I said, yeah, I, I work at Ripon. And they said, you're not gonna believe this. Two of the people that um, I work with went to Ripon College do you know so-and-so? And they mentioned um, the athletic trainer. And I said, well, of course. And Emily's like, I work with him. And, you know, so different things, small story short. Well, Emily's dream job would be to work for the Chicago Red Stars, which is the women's um, professional soccer team in Chicago. And just so happens we went over to this booth that they had. And the same gentleman that I had met was at that booth and two of his colleagues were Ripon grads were there. We talked with them. We met and found out, you know, that they knew some of the same people we did. And because of that, they brought their executive director over to introduce Emily to her. And she got to talk about a possible internship there with them next summer. I mean, just who would have thought? You know, and so that's my little ripping story, um, just kind of small world. And you just never know. And the reason I wore my ripping, because I didn't have anything USA and it was red. 
So, you know, it wasn't like I planned on letting people know about Rippin, but it did happen. So um, next I'm going to introduce uh, Elizabeth McKen McKay Warner. So I'm so happy to be with you here to share my story. Um, I'm Elizabeth Warner. My daughter is finishing her junior year. Unfortunately, she's finishing it from home and she would much rather be on campus with her friends. We live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, so about 30 miles away from campus. Um, my daughter is majoring in biology and she has minors in chemistry and Spanish. And I wanted to take the chance to tell you that she's been able to participate in the In Focus program. As a freshman, she actually went to Rome and that was amazing. And um, then she also got to go with the discovery tours uh, to Texas. So um, she has some other trips on her agenda. So hopefully we'll get back to campus in the fall and she can do those. And also uh, my daughter was the host of the video that you just watched with the long red hair. Just, just want to point that out. <laughs> um, she's, she's active on campus and actually, even though we're just 30 miles away, the, the past two summers, she has stayed on campus because that's her place and she's lived in the campus apartments with friends and had different jobs on campus, different internships, and she's earned a little bit of money and she's um, just loved it. And um, this year, as a, when she goes back as a senior, she's actually going to be living in the campus apartments. Um, she plays on the women's tennis team and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll have a team this fall and we can resume the season. Um, she, so she's played for three seasons and as, um, as a tennis player, she's been the representative on, um, it used to be called SALT, but now I think it's something different, Student Athletic Advisory Committee. Um, and then she's also involved in Greek life and some of her campus jobs have been working um, as a student ambassador and she gave tours with admissions. And now she works in the office of let's see, constituent engagement and advancement. Is that correct? Hope I got that right. Um, and one of the stories that I would like to share um, is that, well, first of all, as a parent of a college student, there's not a lot that you can do for your kids once they just go off and leave and go to college. But at Ripon, um, what I like is that I've had the opportunity to come to campus to bring things and go to sporting events. And I've met some of her friends and her sorority sisters. I've met some of her professors. Um, I know some of the people who are on staff there. And I, I think it's great at a, at a large state school, I, I wouldn't know any of that. So it brings me comfort to kind of know who she's spending her time with and how she's filling her days. And um, the Catalyst program allows the students to have opportunities to work with professors that are way outside of their areas um, that they would never have met. And one of the professors that my daughter had, I think it was her sophomore year perhaps, they actually went to his home because he lives right in Ripon and they did a cooking experiment with the whole class. And I think it was wonderful that she got to see that it was a professor who um, he has a home with a family and children and pets and so that's his job, but she also, she got to get out of the dorm and go back to see like what a house looks like. They kind of forget when they go off to college, all the nice things, the coziness of the home. And, um, and this was one of her professors and um, I saw it was very unique and it was very special. And I don't think you would get that at a state school either. So thanks Elizabeth. Okay. I'm going to uh, move on to Dawn next. Hi there. Um, my name is Dawn Butler. Um, I am a parent. We live um, about 30 minutes, 20 minutes from campus. And my daughter's Kaylee Butler. She's a senior this year and a very sad senior to be missing out on, on the last part of her, her on campus life. Um, in fact, she's sitting at the table right now. And um, I think there's going to be a few tears here before the, the end of this. Um, I have an older daughter who She's a year older and also went to a, a state school ahead of Kaylee. And then Kaylee joined Ripon the following year. And I just totally agree. Um, Kaylee just was, I felt like wrapped in everybody's arms from the minute she came 
into Ripon, and it really has been a second home for her. Um, she's an uh, early childhood education major and a studio art major, and she has just had some phenomenal experiences. And we, from day one, have just felt completely confident with her being taken care of there. And, you know, it was sad at first because she never really wanted to come home. She never wanted to spend a lot of time with us, but it also as a parent really was a comfort because you knew she was in a good place and with good people. Um, she got to know her professors personally, um, was right away able to, you know, ask them questions, talk to them, um, email. She always was able to go and get answers and, you know, it wasn't quite like that with their other daughter going to a bigger um, UW state school. Um, in fact, we don't really know any of the professors and had very little contact at all with anybody there. We dropped her off at college and felt like we just were dropping her in an unknown land. And, and it was really unsettling as a parent and um, really hard for her to navigate that system. With Kaylee, it just seemed like the minute she walked into the place, she was at home. And, you know, people were greeting her and making her feel like part of the, the whole campus experience. So it has really, really been a good fit for Kaylee. Um, hindsight, of course, is always 2020, and we wished we would have pushed a little bit harder for the older one to have that same experience, but they're all different. Um, She's done some amazing things while she's on campus. Um, she's been part of a Love Your Melon group. She was served as president for a while. She was part of Greek life, which at first I have to say, when you start talking about sororities, my brain from the 80s goes back to, uh, no, there'll be none of that kind of stuff. It has been a completely different experience. Those are truly like her second family members. Um, I have kind of a funny story about that. She doesn't really want me to tell, but I'm going to anyway. Um, of course, we know beyond um, academics and all of the things that go on, there are also personal relationships. And, and at one point, um, there was a breakup. And when you're not right there to comfort your child, you, of course, worry about things. And her um, sorority <laughs> sisters immediately swept into her dorm room, took every picture off the wall that was related to that um, particular relationship and put up new pictures of her doing things with her sorority sisters. And so even though we weren't right there with her, we knew she was well taken care of. But um, yeah, we just can't say enough good about about her experience. And I'm, I'm kind of sorry to see it come to an end for her because it really has been, been amazing. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some things too. She went on a phenomenal trip to Italy and that again, I've never sent a child overseas before, but we never worried and we never felt uncomfortable because we knew she was with people that cared about her almost as much as we do. So um, that's my story, I guess. Thanks, Thanks for inviting Dawn. me tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, next, we'll go to Miko. Hi. Um, Miko Gill and my son is D'Amico Walker. He is a freshman, uh, finishing up his freshman year at Ripon and his uh, major, which he's just decided not too long ago, is going to be exercise science, um, focusing on human performance. And the funny thing is, is that my sister graduated from Ripon College and Lynn recruited my sister from back then. And we had the pleasure of having her uh, with D'Amico. And D'Amico is a um, member of the track and field team. And Coach Wood had, did an excellent job. Um, we, he had been scouted by D1 and D2 um, schools because of his performance, which we didn't even know he was doing that good in track. We just love our kids. So we just thought, hey, he's doing good. But, you know, people started scouting. Um, but really that uh, connection and that um, touch that we had um, from day one from Coach Wood and Lynn 
uh, really solidified the deal for us um, as a family because we did make a collective decision for him um, as far as coming to Ripon. And let's see, let's talk about a, a great story. So um, Mr. D'Amico has been up there doing his thing. He is loving his roommates and his team and his brothers as they will call it. And he's a shy kind of guy. But let me tell you, he's been up at Ripon, um, going places in town, BW3 movies, all types of things. And we're like, what? Really? Okay. So we're excited that he was up there and he has totally, um, I guess, become his own person. So that has been great for us. And then on January 25th, uh, we came up for uh, a track meet indoor happened to be talking to some people that we were sitting next to and he began to just tell us hey i'm here because i believe this kid is gonna break my record today we're like really we're like well we came up to see our son and bill schultz was there and Demico walker was the kid that he was there to see so what is so phenomenal is Demico did break his record didn't even know he broke it then D'Amico broke his own record that same day. Um, but to have uh, the community there and the alums there to be so connected to the college, the pride and the connectivity, uh, that for me as a parent brought a lot of joy and D'Amico was so stunned. Um, so that speaks volumes to us as parents that alums and the community, they come out and they support and I'll tell you our D1s and our D2s that were scouting, I kind of felt like I was getting some used car salesmen and um, I wasn't willing to uh, sell my son. Um, we made a great choice with Ribbon. Thanks, Miko. And uh, Philip and Jean, am I right on that? I, your names don't say that. So I'm, I'm trying to remember <laughs> what uh, Jill said earlier. Yep. From um, Indiana. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Take it away. Go ahead there. All right. So we're from Delphi, Indiana. We're about uh, 25 minutes from Purdue University, um, about five and a half hours away from Rip. Well, about five hours from Ripon. The boys make it in four and a half, but I always have to make, you know, several stops on the way. So, um, mm -hmm. of course, we have two boys up there now. Marcus is a junior and Luke is a freshman. And they both play tennis, um, you know, ripping. <laughs> and, of course, Marcus has had uh, three different coaches, um, which, you know, has been kind of a rough, rough thing. But um, I think the positive for him is he's got to see three different coaching styles. So I think maybe that might be able to help him in time. Um, hated to see their season get cut short. Um, I really, we had just went and watched them what the weekend before March all this happened and they were, I mean, they really looked like they were really starting to settle in as a tennis team. Um, I, I love coming up to Ripon. I get excited when we come to visit the boys. Um, you know, we don't get up very often, just maybe a couple times a year. Um, but at the end of the day, um, really the most nerve wracking thing for me when I know they're traveling back and forth, um, but once I know they're on campus, um, I typically, you know, don't worry too much about it because I really do feel like, you know, they're secure and safe up there. Um, as far as academics, um, I mean, it's really, I, I mean, I think the school has been good for them. Um, yeah, their majors are communication. Luke just decided here, just told us a few weeks ago um, what he's going to do. So, um, but uh, no, I think it's a small little community. Um, I, I know Marcus and Luke, uh, well, Marcus is uh, part of the fraternity and Luke will probably join, I think next year. I'm not sure what they're doing with that now, but, um, but outside of that, um, I, I know they're not liking the online stuff right now, to be honest with you. Um, they would rather be up there for sure. Um, so, um, Kind of an unfortunate thing to see anybody missing those opportunities when you know i remember college was such a great time so 
and I, I just hate to see them, you know, miss that. So, um, Jean, do you want to add anything? Go for it. Yeah, they've both uh, worked on campus. Um, Marcus's sophomore year, he was an RA. Um, that was a little rough. He did um, finish, but he got sick a lot, so <laughs> he decided not to do that the next year. Um, but then he also joined the fraternity, so he uh, spends a lot of time with those guys. Um, and so much so that he's um, decided to uh, not stay in the senior apartments next year. So um, he just loves um, being on campus and um, being with the, his group of buddies. So, um, and yeah, Luke had a little rough start on, um, <laughs> even though his uh, brother was up there, he still was a little homesick, but he, um, he done really well. And, um, has made a lot of friends um, and decided to um, do communications. He also works. Um, he referees down. Yeah, yeah. They, he has a couple different jobs that he does. Yeah. He does the media stuff and then does um, the refereeing, the intramural sports. So. Great. But we just try and let him go up thing you know and and it's you know when they first Marcus first went up there I was like oh my gosh I'm never gonna see him but I'm telling you it just it really has changed who they are you know just being away from home and and you know I, I they seem Marcus exceptionally like at this point the oldest one really seems like he's really matured as far as like understanding the responsibilities of coming home and you know and thinking no realizing that he you know, he needs to do things like when they were freshmen, they're like, mm, we don't, these are my rules. I don't have to come home and you know, I'm in college now, you know, so it's kind of funny to see them progress as they, as they through, but, um, but no, we, we, we equally like ripping as much as I think they do. Yeah. One Hi. short story I'm going to say, Lynn. So you guys have all talked about how far away you are from ripping. Um, I'm about three blocks from Ripon, <laughs> and both my daughters have lived on campus and um, rarely come home. The, the best way to, to have them come home is for me to cook a meal, and then they might say, can we bring a friend? Um, and, and they don't even, my oldest would, let, would like to do laundry at home from time to time, but my youngest will be like, no, mom, I got it. I'll just do it here, and I was like, what kid doesn't want to bring their laundry home if mom's offering, right? So, um, yeah, but uh, literally we are three blocks away and they only come home when the college closes down at, um, you know, spring break, fall break, and winter break was about all that I would see them. In fact, the other story is, is last year it was Easter and I said, are you guys going to come home for Easter? And they said, yeah, like we'll go to grandma's with you on Easter Sunday. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And they're like, well, is that normal? Do people go home for like the weekend of Easter? You know, <laughs> like they just were like, well, why would I leave? So, yeah. I'm One sorry, thing. Lynn. You know, oh, I could tell lots of not stories. Not at all. Not at all. Um, so you'll notice at the bottom of your screen for the guests that there is a Q&A option. And I invite you to to ask questions and we'll share them with the panelists and they'll take turns answering from their perspective. Um, there was a question that did appear early on, Elizabeth. Um, here it is. Um, the question was, um, where did your daughter go to high school? Because I already answered, but go ahead, Elizabeth. Oh. My daughter went to Oshkosh West High School. So whoever Alrighty. it was said their student is at West right now. Oh, please reach out or send me a note or contact me and we'll give you a tour of Ripon and that would be great. <laughs> I wanted to add something to um, what Miko said about a sporting event and when you go as a parent just to observe. We, we were floored by the amount of people who work at Ripon, either coaches themselves or faculty or staff that came to the tennis matches and even Coach Larson, who is the gentleman, um, he used to be the coach at Ripon and the, the courts are named after him. He still comes back to watch the tennis matches, and it's a really rich experience. Um, 
it's unlike any other college. Um, I just can't imagine at a state school you would have connections with people and we formed friendships with the other parents and I just enjoyed seeing that the professors were coming out to watch their students play and um, it was great. It's very supportive. Well, speaking of student athletes, here's a question. To all of the student athlete parents, my son will be coming from Texas. Yep, Texas to play basketball. How has it been for your child to balance sports and academics? Academics are always first, the, from what I understand. Like if they have, you know, school stuff to do, um, the coaches are very um, helpful of making sure they get that done first. And from, what I, from what I've gathered, yeah. One thing that I would mention is having, um, having had several, uh, not only, I, I personally did not have anyone on the men's basketball team having two daughters, but um, having had students that have been on the, man, the men's basketball team and the women's uh, basketball team, um, the, both of those coaches are excellent. And not only are they developing um, good athletes, they're developing good young adults. Um, they have them out volunteering, doing service work. I just, I, I'm amazed at the, um, the respect that is kind of expected, um, that the coach is really, um, really encourage. And um, I've just been very impressed by a number of the coaches here at the college and, and not just developing good athletes, but developing good people. Um, Anything else? Anyone else? Miko, would you like to add something? Did you want to talk? Definitely. I would definitely agree on, on, um, with being able to balance. So our number one concern was academics first and then athletics. And um, he also wanted to work. So we were definitely looking at time management and some other things that were going on. Um, for him in particular. And what was great about that is um, finding your tribe. He already had his tribe in place. And the coach had already worked on putting together even with roommates and um, looking at uh, certain other things that we didn't have to worry about. So the balance was there. And even when he went to go for his job, because he did work on campus, they also made sure that he was balancing out and didn't have too many hours of working to be able to get in his study time, tutor time, and being able to eat and everything else. I was surprised at everything that had, that was being done, and I didn't necessarily have to do it. So that was awesome. All right. Um, another question. Do the kids need computers, or do they get computers when they come to school? Anything else we should look to get to help them prepare for college? So I'll, I'll step in and answer that one. There are, college, there are um, computers labs on campus, but I would say 90 to 95% of students um, bring their own laptops. And our, um, our IT department does a really nice job of helping them um, with anything they need as far as uh, there's different software if they don't have that they can get licenses to, um, helping them get set up and different things that way. Um, the Kemper lab is open 24 hours a day, so students can use their ID to go into that lab on campus. But I would say most students do have their own laptops. Um, the, the college does not provide anything like that for them at this point. Can I just take a quick pause? I want to hand out a couple prizes. Surprise! Yay! Um, so I would like to do this. Um, I am going to, I'm looking at registrations when they came in on our uh, system here to register for this event. And I'm going to look at, um, since we were founded in 1851, I'm going to give a prize to the 18th person that registered, the fifth person, and the first person. So you will be getting a prize um, sent to you shortly. Give it a week or two before we get that out to you, but we'll send something out. Um, so the first, the 18, is Julie Marsh. 
Yeah. Yay, Julie. Okay. Um, <laughs> number five, the 1851, the five is Gloria Lestra. Yay, Gloria. And the first person who registered for this is Rob Davis. So Yay, Ryan's Rob. dad, Sam's mom, and is it Caitlin's mom? Um, awesome. If the three of you would um, like to put in the Q&A, your sizes. I'm going to get you some kind of swag. So Julie, Gloria, and Rob, throw in the Q&A your sizes, and I'll get those out to you. Well, congratulations. Woo! Woo! If you want to do All a right. prize drawing, you can. So I have more prizes. So. Okay. Um, another question. Um, my child is also coming from Texas. What suggestions do you have in terms of supporting our child from a distance? Bring plenty of coats. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and don't have them bring them home during spring break because yeah. they'll need them after spring break. Yeah, so <laughs> this freshman year, Jean thought she was going to be helpful to bring home some of it, some of his stuff, so he didn't have to haul it all home. So mm -hmm. he gave up his winter coat, which was a big mistake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they got six inches like that weekend. Yeah, next week. that was an unusual year, not a typical. <laughs> I have something maybe to say about that too. Um, I know one of the things that Kaylee really likes is all of the downtown businesses are just amazing and part yeah. of the family. So maybe some gift cards to, you know, make them feel like they can make those connections. Um, there's just some really outstanding businesses downtown. So even though they might be many, many states away, just being able to send some of those things and, and purchase some of those things for them might make them feel more at home. I would say too, um, one of the things that's so wonderful is Amazon. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, um, I would not, and I maybe shouldn't say this too loudly because I don't know who sponsors it, but I know sometimes they'll have, you know, send your child this gift, this care package, that care package, you know, you're better off just getting some things together that you know they'll like and enjoy and sending some little surprise care packages. Um, for me, I could just box it up and take it over and I would put it in their little mailbox over at the mail center, but you could mail it to them and they always enjoy getting mail. Um, even if it's just a note or a card from grandma or grandpa or, you know, whomever, aunts, uncles, um, I think that's just kind of a nice thing to help. But um, I know someone mentioned about being homesick and different things that way. One of the great things that they do at Ripon here is um, when students first move in, if they're a fall athlete, they're going to be moving in at the same time as the rest of their teammates. So they'll have a little bit of a group to, to hang with. Um, but if not, they do have uh, welcome week activities and they try to keep them really busy those first few days so that they're not you know, just sitting in their room going, oh my God, mom and dad left me. Now what do I do? You know, so um, they, they do a lot to keep them busy and games and different things that way. So we try to keep them busy. We start classes pretty much a couple days after they, you know, a day or two after they get here. So there isn't a lot of downtime. Quite honestly, I'll also just interject as well. Um, there is a very genuine sense of community on campus and whether someone lives three blocks away from campus or at the other end of the United States of America or Africa or England or wherever they might be coming from to Ripon College, um, students have each other's backs, faculty genuinely care about the health, well-being and safety of students and there is a real sense of um, people being together and supportive of one another through thick and thin and, um, and so I, I absolutely believe you can feel that your child will have a support network, a lot of good friends, and certainly professors who have the student's very best interest at heart. Lynn, there's some more questions if you yep. want to do All right, them. sorry, so much for my color commentary then. <laughs> okay, um, so on average, how much time do students spend on homework or academics per day, not a counting lot. class time? Haley's writing me notes right now. Let's see what she says. <laughs> She's saying two to four for heavy load and one to two, I'm assuming she's saying hours for a light load. Now, Kaylee is a studier, so 
I don't know how that compares to most people, but she really, I know, puts her all into, into studying. But she's saying two to four hours for heavy and one to two for light. Classes. For the light, yeah. One to two hours for a light load of classes, I think is what she's yeah. saying per day. I would say that's pretty typical. Um, and I, you know, I think that students that are more scheduled and have busier schedules tend to do better because they have to study when they have the time to study. Whereas um, if, if they have a lot of free time, they sometimes don't use it very well. So um, I, I tend to see students do better when they are scheduled. The one thing that I would really encourage um, as I'm putting on my Franzine Center hat right now um, for academic success is um, students getting a planner and um, using the planner, taking their syllabi that they get from each of their professors and putting in due dates and different things at the beginning of the semester so they, they really um, can see what, you know, how the semester is going to map out for them. And granted, sometimes things change, but at least then they know oh my gosh, this third week in, in September, I have four papers due. And hopefully they will learn to not procrastinate. Um, and sometimes it takes some of us a little longer to get that, but um, yeah. So that would be one piece of advice I would give. All right, another question. First, a comment. First, thank you all for sharing your feelings about Ripon. It's reassuring to hear, hear how much you appreciate the school, but I have some questions. Um, Dawn, we're favoring Ripon over a different school, a larger school, but I have a concern over what seems like a comparatively limited number of majors at Ripon versus a larger school. Did your daughter ever feel limited and did your other daughter feel overwhelmed by choices? Uh, yes, I, my older daughter never did find a major. Um, she spent two years at one of those bigger schools and I, I really felt, my husband and I felt like, unless you have a child that is really a good advocate for themselves and will reach out and go after what they know they want, that's just not always a good fit. And a lot of kids at that age just aren't in that position yet. Uh, Kaylee knew what she wanted starting off, but then she added studio art, um, which was kind of a surprise to us. and. Rippon again just kind of wrapped her in their arms and made her feel such confidence that she could reach out to an area that she didn't have a lot of experience with and do really well with it. So um, I guess we never we didn't feel she was limited at all. She did know she wanted education, so we knew they offered that. But um, adding a major was something we never dreamed she would do. And um, it was the the bigger school was extremely overwhelming. The other thing I want to say is, you know, as a parent of college kids, you're always talking to parents and people that are part of colleges. And I have not yet found somebody that has gone to Ripon that doesn't just absolutely light up and love and want to talk about Ripon. And I can't say that about a lot of other schools. And it's almost a joke between my husband and I because we just still have not been able to find anybody who will say anything bad about Ripon College at all. It is really, really a neat place and really interesting that so many people are so taken with it. So I hope that answers the question. I know that's a little adding in. Actually, one parent did also comment that my work occasionally brings me to Ripon. The people that I work with there have wonderful things to say about Ripon College. So it does seem to be a, a common thread and we're very pleased about that. Can I add something to the last question? Yes. yes. Um, because of the Catalyst program, it frees up so many hours for the students. So at a regular state school, there are a lot of educational classes they have to take from a lot of different areas, and it just fills the day, fills the week. And at Ripon, you have time to continue with something, like my daughter continued with Spanish just because she really liked it in high school. And now she's able to get a minor in that and the same with chemistry. And um, it's, it's just been great because she was able to um, have time to spend on things that she liked in addition to getting her major. 
And a lot of kids get double majors at Ripon because of the Catalyst program, because it freed up some of their hours and it was suddenly available time they could use in other ways. I just want to pipe in, we have about 15 minutes. So let's kind of get through the questions we have and um, we want to keep everybody on time with everything. So Lynn. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. um, how prepared do you feel your student is for their chosen career path? Have they made connections at Ripon that have led to possible jobs? Don't know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just step in and answer this. Um, I, I work with um, student teachers and um, one of the things that I would say is um, also working with student teachers, of course, we have lots of alumni and, and different things that way. Um, but because at Ripon we are so small, we really get to know our students. You'd be surprised at the amount of networking that happens and the amount of um, recommendations that we are able to offer and connections that we can make not only with uh, the professors, but the alumni office. And um, Elizabeth kind of talked a little bit about uh, the discovery uh, tour that uh, Mackenzie went on. And that is actually funded by alumni. And they went to Texas and met with other alumni, stayed at some alumni's house and, you know, and, and just all of these wonderful things that alumni are willing to do and to reach out and help students find careers and jobs and, and so forth. So um, I think that's one thing that Rippon does well too. Next question, Lynn. Yes, okay. Um, I believe you sort of touched on this, Jean, but um, a question, does Rippon have any parent groups, et cetera, to provide things like care packages that parents can utilize? Um, so I mentioned at the beginning that we have a Facebook page called the Rippon Parent Network. Um, and as I said, I'm one of the co-chairs for that. Uh, we do offer two meetings a year as well um, on campus. Um, one of them will be usually be the weekend of family weekend. And um, then we always have one in the spring as well. Um, as far as care packages and different things like that, we don't typically organize that. Um, but I do know that there are some teams on campus that will organize some types of those event, those types of things. Um, but the nice thing about the Ripon Facebook page is there's lots of us on there that can answer questions that you have. And so that's what it's kind of great about it is it's a great place to get those questions you're not sure of um, answered. And typically, I'm, I'm sad because this has just been announced that summer orientation isn't happening this year because of the COVID-19 health emergency. Um, but typically, it's a really great time to connect with parents. Um, we hold uh, social events in the evenings, and it's a great way to meet some of us parents that are in the area and to connect and kind of get to know some things and um, share all of our insider information about how to navigate Ripon. So a couple of things, back to the parent, parent Facebook page. If you go on to Facebook, it's called Ripon Parent Network and ask to join and you will be welcome to join the group and then you can be part of that ongoing discussion. Um, if you do have particular questions or trouble uh, finding that link, feel free to call um, your appropriate admission council or the general Ripon College number and we'll help you with that. Um, regarding summer orientation, um, it's true, yes, the on-campus portion of summer orientation has actually been disbanded for this year. That decision just came out. However, we do intend to continue with summer orientation. So stay tuned. I know some of you have paid registration and that money will be credited to your account for next year. So that won't be lost. Um, the days still continue to be June 22nd to 23rd or 23rd to 24th. There will be time for your student to meet with their advisor, 
to plan their schedule. Um, there'll be a variety of virtual events, some taped events. Stay tuned, Ripon will certainly do all we can to provide a very enriched and helpful and welcoming experience for all of you to make sure your questions are answered and your students feel engaged. So we feel confident moving forward that while honestly we're very sad that it can't all be on campus, um, we'll do what we can, we'll help in any way we can, and as soon as that information becomes available, you all will definitely hear about it. So sit tight, hold your breath, and um, we'll be in touch as soon as we know more. Another question, what's the best way for my freshman son to find a roommate? Oh, that's, that's a good question because... Um, We've had two different, ex very different experiences yeah. with this. So our oldest, when he went to the summer orientation, who he ended up staying in the dorm room with, um, ended up being his roommate. Um, Just by where they were standing in line. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it, was, it was a good experience. Unfortunately, he only lasted, his roommate only lasted a semester. Um, and then he had to find, um, well, then he decided to be an RA, so Marcus didn't have to find another roommate, but um, our younger one, Luke, um, got on um, the social media. I'm thinking it's the Facebook page for freshmen and um, was able to find his roommate there. And then he chose to meet at summer orientation, you know, to give it a try. And, and um, they didn't stay in the same room, but um, got to spend you know, that day together, and uh, that's worked out great. They're going to be roommates again next year. So, um, yeah, I would say the social media, Facebook, be a good. Good. Did any parents, did your kids um, get matched with a student, a roommate randomly without knowing? Anybody? Yeah, I think Kaylee was random. Um, okay. The first year, and she actually did have a bad experience. <laughs> partway into the year and Rippon was just so supportive. They immediately helped her with that situation and offered her choices, reached out to us as parents. And um, we were kind of surprised by that because, you know, roommate trouble is going to happen. And that's probably one of the biggest adjustments your, your uh, freshman will make is living that close to somebody else. But um, yeah, it, it got taken care of and it was handled very well. Um, and we were able to move on with the year. So. There is a housing form available for students to complete where they can offer preferences regarding sleep patterns or whether they're a tidy or messy person. Um, and then our housing director does his very best to find a compatible roommate. But true, others meet through the Facebook page for the class of 2024. Some student athletes are matched by coaches. So there are a variety of opportunities, um, but it's not uncommon for students just to complete a housing form and, um, and look forward to sort of having a surprise roommate um, and hopefully a new friend. Great. A few more okay. questions we want to attack. Yeah. Yes. Um, if we did not get registered for orientation, will that reopen with the online version? Absolutely, there's still time to register for summer orientation. So go to our website, to the admission portion of the website, and you can register still for summer orientation. Do most students do work study their first semester? And what's the process for finding the opportunity? I'll jump in and answer this question. Um, I would say if they want a job, they will find a job. Um, there is through our financial aid office, I believe the program is called Handshake now, yes. where all the jobs on campus are posted and then students simply apply using that, um, that website link. Um, so it's very handy. They, I know as someone who hires students, um, we tell them the job description and then students will send us their resumes through that, that portal system. So it's very slick that way. Uh, students are only allowed to work up to 20 hours total on campus a week, so they do limit them that way. Um, and there's always job at the food service, so, you know, if they tell you there's no jobs, that's not true. There are. <laughs> I see lots of questions coming in yet. Um, okay. Um, I, yeah. 
What are your thoughts on freshmen having a car on campus? My son wants to have his, but I'm not exactly on board with this. I'm not a fan of cars on campus because it costs a lot of money and Ripon, the little town is just a few blocks away and someone else will have a car to get them down to Webster's, which is the grocery store in Ripon. So it was an expense that we chose to not have to, to pay for. It wouldn't work out well for us. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to go get them. But they, yeah, <laughs> they just have one car they share. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a car, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing it's too both is, ways. <laughs> Kaylee had no car to start with and then she ended up with one. So, but everything's so accessible. It was more of a convenience for us. So we didn't have to run and get her when she needed to come home. So, yeah. And I was going to say um, the grocery store, we've actually done shuttles to the grocery store now. So they don't even need to find someone on campus. They will run shuttles over to the grocery store for them on certain days, so. All right, um, this question is for Jean, since she's a moderator on the Parents Facebook page or anyone else could, that can share insights. I've been on the Parent Facebook page and a thread that was popular recently has been the challenge of food quality. Any update on this? Thanks. Jean, yeah. you have some updates, don't you? Uh, yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> we are actually, um, we are, have a request for proposals out right now, and we have six different companies that have um, sent in proposals, and we're looking at those currently. Um, and we will be evaluating that in the next month, probably. And then because of the COVID-19 health emergency, it's actually working to our advantage. Um, because we didn't know if we would, if we were to make a change, if we would be able to get that up and running because of the time frames. Well, because pretty much everything has been canceled for the summer, it gives us a little more time to have, if there would be a change in plans um, to have that happen. So Jill and I are both on the, the committee that are working on this. And so um, we're just in the beginning stages, but yes, that has been addressed or will be addressed as well. And some of the things that have come up and gone on and different things, you know, if you were to ask any student on any college campus, their two biggest complaints are going to be general gen eds and food. So, don't you have know, gen eds. <laughs> yeah, they don't have gen eds here. You know, we have, we have cattle. All they can so complain about is food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that's my commentary on that. <laughs> A question came in regarding the cost of having a car on campus. Um, there are varying prices for different lots for parking on campus, and they range anywhere from $150 a year to $400 per year based on their location relative to residence halls or out lots on campus. But students, um, there's a lottery system. They do generally have a choice where they'd like to have their car, and then the, the prices vary based on where their particular parking lot is. One other question um, is, again, regarding summer orientation. Yes, that will not go on campus as planned, but stay tuned for virtual opportunities. And what would you say to a parent like myself concerned about paying tuition for what may end up being a virtual college experience? I'll quick cut in and then throw it back to you that um, Ripon will do all we can to have college on campus because we love our residential traditional liberal arts and sciences experience. However, we will comply with government mandates. And so we're very, um, very cautiously optimistic. And we're looking at a variety of scenarios for what will happen in the fall. And as soon as we have answers regarding the next steps and how we will officially proceed, you'll all know about it. One thing I'm just going to jump in as a member of the faculty here is Ripon, having a child doing this right now and doing this myself right now, online learning, this is, this is not online learning as we would want it. This was remote learning. This is an emergency type situation. Ripon does not have online learning as, as its normal mode of um, delivery for instruction. So we are aware of several things and we are planning to make things better 
as necessary. So if we are online in the fall, um, we are taking steps over the summer to improve the instruction, improve the quality, improve all of those things, including teacher pedagogy, because we weren't, we haven't had the training to do this well yet. And so um, that is some things that have been talked about. Um, and, and, get, and we don't know what anything will be, but I just want to assure you that this was a stopgap measure this this last six, you know, the last six weeks of the semester, but certainly not how we would see continuing to do it if we need to in the future. When can a freshman start applying for campus jobs? I think usually after summer orientation, they'll have more information yes. about how to do that. The, the handshake. Sorry, Handshake website will be um, up and running sometime, I would say, mid-summer. Mid um, students will be able to access that and see what jobs are, are uh, viable, and you can start applying at that point. Um, and I'll kind of echo uh, what I heard earlier, that there are jobs if students are not picky, right? And the food service jobs, I believe, pay more. So uh, you may not want to do that, but those are the jobs that are mostly out there because um, kids don't want to do them. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. And as we start winding down, I know we're just running into an hour. Um, perhaps you could take turns sharing a story that you feel really symbolizes Ripon and what makes it unique, especially for those of us parents who are still working with a child undecided. Hmm. <laughs> it's a hard one. It's hard, but yeah. Um. Oh. Okay, here's my, I'm going to jump in because I have, this is what I tell parents all the time. Not only do, have I been a parent here, um, but I talk to a lot of prospective students and parents as part of my job as director of teacher ed. Um, you will not be a number at Ripon. Your child will be looked at, cared for as if they're one of our own. Um, and I say this personally because I was once talking to someone and um, I got very emotional about one of my students. And I almost said, instead of my student, I almost said, my daughter. And I'm like, wait a minute, they're not my daughter, they're my student. But to me, my students are important. And um, it's, it's more, that has been the hardest thing about being online, is not seeing my students every single day when I'm in my office. And being in my office at home is not the same as being in my office in Todd Weir when they can pop in and say, hi, Professor Rigdon, how's it going? Or do you have a minute? Can I get a hug? You know, I mean, and those are the kinds of things that I think makes Ripon special. The other thing that I would say is that for both of my daughters, Ripon was their second choice. And um, they both had ideas about going somewhere where mom wasn't. And because they didn't want mom all up in their business all the time, <laughs> which you all can understand, right? So, um, but both of my daughters ended up coming to Ripon and both of them have never once regretted that decision. Um, even with mom being on campus and running into everybody that knows their mom and, oh, you're, oh, oh, and they'll put it together, you know, and different things like that. But um, yeah, so those are my two little bits on that. Can I, can I jump in on that one a little bit? I'll piggyback on that. Um, definitely, Kaylee knows all of her professors. And I think that small class size and getting to know them personally has made her want to work harder to not disappoint them because it's not just that she's a number that got a grade. She knows those people and because of that, she wants to work harder and be better and do better. And it is rarely a day that we, when we have Kaylee home, that she does not mention at least one of her educators at Ripon. I mean, if we are on trips, she'll say, oh, my art professor would have loved this, or, oh, we did this in that class. And I mean, it's just, 
all the time. So those are close connections and you cannot replace that. And it, it adds to their willingness to want to learn and do better. Miko, I'm going to just jump at you for a second here because I know you haven't spoken a lot. Is there anything else you wanted to add that you've noticed just in the short <laughs> time that um, your son has been here? I would say even before um, coming to Ripon, we needed to make some um, very solid decisions about education. So we're a family where we needed to look at services. And for us, being able to have those meetings ahead of time and um, getting information we never got from our high school, never got from um, counselors and some other people at our high school. We have a really great high school um, here. And we learned things that we were able to do to prepare Ripon and being able to put those things into place we saw the care and concern for him as a person. He was not a number and he was not just an athlete, but genuine, um, genuinely knowing him. And now that he is there, the professors and the coaches, and I mean, we'll get there and um, people know who we are. They the kids or the young people know who he is. And so for us, first name basis and being at some of those athletic events and have other parents say, if you need anything, here's our number, contact us. We're just up the street. We're 10 minutes away. Um, here's coupons for him. So I have other parents who are looking out for him. And then his other roommate, he was in a suite is in Colorado. We're the closest to um, Milwaukee Airport here in Brown Deer. And so that became like another son for me. He knew when he needed to get home, we were going to get him home. He had a vehicle there, but he, they didn't always have to drive here. So there was always that ebb and flow, which for us, that connectivity um, was priceless. And we have no worries about the education. He is doing so well. Um, we are actually absolutely loving it. And I mean, I got my degree and I, now I wish I went to rip it. So um, I feel like he's getting this great experience I missed out on. Alrighty, well, I will um, jump in one last time here. A number of parents have, um, asked, had, have said thank you for your insights, your sharing information, your candor. So I will echo their thanks as well. Um, there is an opportunity for you to take a virtual tour of Ripon College. We have a number of student tour guides who are helping us, even though they're on their home campus, literally in their homes. Please go to Ripon College on the, the website to the admission link, and there's an opportunity to sign up for virtual tours. You'll have a chance to see campus, maybe to refresh yourself or to see campus for the first time. Um, you'll be welcomed by an admission counselor and then the torch will be passed to a, a student tour guide who will share their stories and answer questions from a student's perspective and hopefully you'd find that very helpful during this more challenging time. Um, these parents are the real deal and I hope you've sensed their honesty and enthusiasm. Um, Jean, would you like to say anything as we wrap it up? Yeah, I, I am just going to move for a second here. <laughs> this is our union, um, Harwood Union, and this is where graduation typically takes place. And this, uh, well, I guess you can, <laughs> I don't know how this works here very well, but You're right. this <laughs> stage is um, where the students walk across and get their diplomas. And it's just a wonderful, it's, it, it gets me teary eyed just even I've watched it and and been there. I, I was sad because one of the great things about Ripon and working at Ripon is if your child goes here, you get to give them their diploma. Mm -hmm. And I was looking forward to doing that right there and it rained. And mm -hmm. so Lizzie's graduation was in the Wilmore Center, which was beautiful and air conditioned and wonderful. Um, but yeah, it was uh, not here because this is this is pretty cool because it's like a bowl and people are all up on the hill and it's just it's just a really neat, neat atmosphere. So that's the little shameless plug for Harwood Union. So I want to make a comment that's in the Q&A 
if I'm reading this correctly, I believe I understand it. Um, not a question, but a viewpoint from a parent. Um, as a parent looking at schools, one of the big things for choosing Ripon for him and his daughter was the trust factor. And that was displayed in the Pickard Commons with students leaving their backpacks on the landings. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't believe you would find that at any other college, just a thought for those folks looking to choose between Ripon and other colleges. So if you don't know, Pickard Commons, when you go up to that section, there is a, a landing and stairs and all the students leave their backpacks, computers, purses, everything. They cannot take those things into the Commons. And um, as stated here, it's kind of unusual, but no one takes those things. They're, they're left there and the students trust that, that they are safe. There were a few questions that we didn't get to answer. Please don't hesitate to reach out to your individual admission counselor. We're all very pleased to, to have conversations with you, but we will try to shut this down for tonight. Um, let us know how we can help um, through this important decision-making process. And for those of you who have already decided to join the Ripon community, we welcome you and look forward to seeing all of you in the future. Thank you so much for right. staying with us. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Take care. Thank you, panelists, again. Yeah. We're thank you, thank participants, you. But I really appreciate all of your time and effort and answering questions. So um, good job. We got a lot yeah. of little good um, comments in the uh, Q&As yeah. and thanking us. So appreciate yeah, A lot of grateful audience members. So thanks yeah. for your help. Yeah. And hi, say hi to your kids for us. Yes. <laughs> say, hi to Lu oh, say hi to Luke and Marcus. And tell, hey. it's good to, whoops, I'm going to mute you. Tell D'Amico to keep jumping. <laughs> okay. yes. Phil, if I couldn't hear you, you were oh, muted. So Luke, our youngest one heard you mention your son's name and he said, yes, he is super fast. <laughs> oh, D'Amico? <laughs> well, and, and I'm personal friends of Bill Schultz and his wife, Erica Schultz. So I remember him posting about that. So that's really, really cool. Oh, I didn't realize it was, okay. Bill Schultz, <laughs> yep. And Erica, mm -hmm. so that you guys don't know. So Erica, his wife, uh, worked for the Ripon Admission Office for uh, maybe a year and a half or so. Um, so I have to know her through that. We remain friends and Rip and uh, Bill is an alum. So that was really funny, but good to see you, Jean and Philip. I'm, you know, yes. hey. Good to see you too. <laughs> it's been a while, but um, thank yep. you so much. I appreciate it. You know, honestly, it just also just means the world to me. 